1978 bearings to 2020 bearings. What are the differences between Generation 1 to Generation 3 Dana 44s and anything Advantech that Jeep has come out with recently? Let's get a deep dive into it and find out what makes the Dana 44 tick. Hey Tool Talk fans, I am back with another video for Jeep related stuff. Uh, this can also apply to uh, trucks as in general. We're going to be talking about bearings. That could be any bearing and any differential at any given time because Henry Temkin was a genius and uh, I want to tell you a little bit about him. So stay tuned. So in 1898, Henry Temkin comes up with this incredible idea hey, I need a bearing that can handle directional loads, not only up and down, but left and right. And what that means is that he needed a bearing that was unique to the time, um, and this was 120 years ago, so it is um, kind of old tech, but if it ain't broke, don't fix it. This is something that was revolutionary, uh, and it got him into the Hall of Fame for inventors in 1998. Um, Henry Tim can come up with his tapered roller bearing. Now, what we have generally is a bearing or a Torrington, also known as needle bearings. If you've ever had to feed needle bearings into an input shaft on a transmission, uh, especially our uh, Mustang T5 transmission guys, uh, you'll know about that. And then uh, these little bearings look like this. So they were basic 90 degree cylindrical bearings. They only had one direction. If you put any load on them, they were gonna wear in this direction because there's nothing stopping them from spinning. You put a load on this direction it's just like you take a, a cup um, if you spin it on its side a cup will spin on a table on its side you put a cup straight up and down and you put any kind of load on it it's not going to handle that load it's going to it's going to fail after a while even with lubrication so he knew that like this Torrington style bearing or the needle bearing wasn't going to be enough so here we got Henry um, Henry comes along and says hey man I, you know I'm developing these carriages, I need a, a better axle, I need something that can handle the left and the, the side loads of a differential or an axle shaft, but it also has to handle the loads of the carriage itself up and down. So we give you the, the um, tapered roller bearing. Henry comes along and says, um, you know what, if I put a cylindrical shape into a cone, so instead of it just being a 90 degree cone, we taper the bearing, we taper it 10 to 16 degrees. Uh, and that can be infinitely in, uh, variable, but um, for this demonstration, we're going to just talk about what we normally see in automotive use. And then we have what they call uh, the tapered roller bearing. So the tapered roller bearing looks kind of like this. In, in a, a traditional Torrington bearing, you have lots of little pins, and they're just in line, and they're just in a, in a cylindrical or a round shape. They go onto an axle, and they, they'll provide you plenty of load up and down because all your loads being put on these little bearings as they roll. But if you put any kind of side load on this, it's going to push the shaft out or the bearing is going to slide right out of it because it's sitting at 90 degrees. So these bearings weren't good for axles when you have side shifting carriages and vehicles. And today we have our, our off-roaders, our cars, anything that has an axle in it is going to side load. Uh, you go around a corner, your sh the axle shaft's actually taking side loads not just load of your vehicle, but it's coming left and right. So the, this tapered roller bearing design, um, he puts these little cylinders that are, are, sorry, now cone shaped into the same kind of bearing um, as the Torrington, but now we have Henry uh, Timken's tapered design. So Timken, uh, you've probably heard of that, especially if you're into off-roading, if you're into sports cars, if you ever put your hands on an axle, you've probably seen a Timken bearing. Timken uh, in the 70s went worldwide with their, with their Timken uh, manufacturing. They were made in Korea, Japan. Uh, the best Timken bearings you can buy are, are US made, uh, Korean made, or Japanese made. I think I have all three bear bearings going into my uh, truck that you guys, if you've been following me, have, have been seeing the build go along. Uh, the pinion bearings and I think the one of the bearings on the side of the carrier that's inside the axle and I'm about to get to that is actually made in Korea. The best bearings are Timken bearings because he's the original designer. 
uh, his patents superseded at the time anything else, and it was just one of the greatest inventions that had been ever made uh, for the automotive industry. And so with this tapered bearing, now, like I've said, we can get a side load and up and down load, and how that happens is that the bearing now is rolling on not just the up, the uh, left and right, as this would be left and right, or the up and down, if you're putting your entire vehicle, say your vehicle's sitting on this bearing and the load of the vehicle, you have a, you know, several thousand pounds um, per axle on your bearings. The weight is being pushed down. On this one, when it side loads, it's now not only being pushed this way, but this, in a way, deflects in every direction. Because now when you're putting that load on, the bearings are sitting in, a, in what they call a race or a cup. And that race is offset 10 to 16 degrees along with the load of this bearing. So now the bearing is getting multi-direction. Because you've taken something around, I'll show you a bearing. Speaking this to so many degrees is, is as hard as it is. Um, this just easier to show you. These bearings aren't square. They're not, they're actually, they have a slight degree of of, uh, of deflection. They're not completely 90 degrees as a touring tube would be. And then the bearing isn't only providing you load this direction, it's now providing you load this direction because once you put this on and you have one going one direction and one going the other, the load's put on the cup and the cup has this, the same degree built into it. It's the same angle, it's not square. This, is, this angle matches this angle. When they're put in there together, you now get this incredibly smooth running bearing. Not only can you put this into your differential or onto your axle, um, when the load is applied to the side of it, look, it's still spinning. I can put a lot of load against it and it still spins. Otherwise, the other bearing, it would push right through it because it would be square. These aren't square, so it stops. So the load could be applied this direction full force as well as this direction. So now the weight of my vehicle is sitting on this bearing. It's also being side loaded so that when the vehicle is going around a corner, that bearing is not locking up or getting pushed out of its housing. It's sticking against there. So hopefully, hoping that was enough to kind of convince you. Now there's also on the other side, an opposite opposing bearing. And so on this side, when the load's being applied, it's now sitting against it and still spins. You don't lose any direction in any direction. If you have two of these bearings, you don't lose any force uh, or you, you have a very stable platform because the bearing is bearing all the weight, hence the word bearing. So I must have said bearing 50 times. I know some of you guys count that stuff. I want to hear in the comments how many times I say bearing. So once that, that side loads on there in either direction, you've now got some very unique um, design and engineering in this thing. So Henry Timken comes along and creates this taper bearing and revolutionizes axles and differentials and everything else that comes after that. Henry comes along, he's, uh, he's an incredible inventor, he designs this bearing, he gets into the Hall of Fame in the 90s, and would you think bearing design has changed in the last 120 years from this, this roller taper bearing? Not much. Um, the Advantech, the difference between a Dana 44 from the 40s through up and through the early 2000s was almost no change. The pinion size was similar. The ring gear size, I, think, I believe, was 226 millimeter, which is the standard Dana 44. And also the Dana 44 was, um, was such a strong design. It is the venerable light axle for Jeep and off-road enthusiasts. It's just strong enough to be uh, abused a little bit, but it's also uh, small enough that it gives you maximum ground clearance. So the, the Dana 44 was the first thing they put in the, the new Rubicons in the early 2000s. I've actually had a, a couple of them in the TJ. The same Dana 44 that was in the 40s and the 50s and the 70s all the way to the 2000s was the same one they put under the Jeep TJ. It was the same housing. It was the same design. Uh, it, it, the parts are all interchangeable. That all changed when the Jeep JK came out. They put a bigger bearing in and uh, they are unique to the JK. That is the Dana 44 second gen. Uh, you have to be very careful with the years that you talk about Jeeps. Uh, they did use those in other vehicles, but I specialized in Jeeps and that's what I'm really familiar with. Uh, I do Ford axles as well and there are Dana 44s and Fords. 
but the what I'm talking about specifically is the first generation, the second generation, and the third generation of Dana 44s. So let me cut over here to uh, the, the years and the differing of the different bearing styles and, the, and that, uh, that Temkin had developed over the years. And let me show you the difference between a uh, very old generation Dana 44 and today's Dana 44. All right, so we've switched over to um, this top-down view of my uh, roller bearings that I have here. I wanted to actually show you something very, very unique. I have a bearing here from 1978. Um, I did a solid axle swap on a on a older Bronco, but it was a full. It was the old TTB axle ac Broncos, and if you know what those are, it's quite kind of a mix between independent front suspension and it's a, a solid beam axle, kind of like what we have under our Jeeps. Um, I took that TTB axle that kind of just splits in the middle, took it completely out and put an axle in that looks like a Jeep. So it's called a solid axle swap is what I did there. And this, that solid axle swap came with a, I found a, and sourced in Dallas, Texas, a 1978 Ford Bronco. And guess what it has in it? Um, roller bearings. These are Timken roller bearings from 1978. They are older than me uh, by a little bit, 40, they're 42 years old and um, almost almost the same age as me. I'm 40 and this year. And um, these are 2020 bearings out of the Advantech Dana 44. So let me stop here for a second. Let me, uh, let me explain something. This is the side carrier bearing on a Dana 44 from the last, uh, see, 1940, the 40s, the, the bearings were, um, the Dana 44 was first made. Uh, and the reason the name Dana 44 came along is that it's good for 4,400 foot pounds. And um, those are American SAE standards. Um, but that 40, Dana 44 means 4,400 foot pounds. The Dana 60 is good for, what, what would you guess? 6,000 foot pounds. So Dana 44 to Dana 60, you get 4,400 foot pounds up to the Dana 60, which is 6,000 foot-pounds. Why I have such a, a love for the 44 is that it's been around for a very long time, since World War II, just after World War II, and it's still going on today. We're into the third generation. So the major changes have happened in the last 20 years. Uh, Jeep went from this style. This is the same bearing you would find, and you can reference these part numbers. This is the bearing number 20, 25590, 25590. This same Timken bearing you can find in Jeep TJs, 1970s technology, and it's in, this, in the early 2000s TJs. It's a good bearing. It's lasted a long time. There's nothing wrong with this. It's good for the 4,400 foot pounds of torque that was designed for the Dana 44. There was a generation between here and the Jeep JK, which is from 2008 up until 2018 so for 10 years there they made one that was just a little bit different between these two and it was good for uh, the Jeep JK was good for 8200 Newton meters and what that means is that well, what's a Newton meter versus the 4400 foot-pounds well if you convert Newton meters which is um, 0.737 so it's just under a, a Newton meter is just under a foot-pound if you're converting them to 8200 and divide that in or uh, multiply that by 0.737 you get 6048 foot pounds well where did we hear that 6000 foot pounds from before what else has 6000 foot pounds of capability oh yeah the old dana 60s so you're telling me i have a dana 44 under my truck in the advantech third generation and the jk axles which is just about the last 10 years i have an axle that's good for over 6000 foot pounds of torque that's pretty amazing. And I don't know that Dana and their wisdom trying to sell Dana 60 axles, it's not the same. It's going to be, a Dana 60 has a bigger ring gear. It's going to be stronger. It's going to take um, impact loads and stress loads differently than a Dana 44. But my point is, is that we went in 10 to 20 years time from the TJ up until the JK and the JL, and now the JT pickup, which is what I'm working on to a Dana 44 that's good for 6,000 foot-pounds of torque. So I now essentially have Dana 60s from the old school. 
I have something as big as Dana 60s in my Jeep that can handle that extra extra beating. So you have a, a similar degree of angle on these. If you were to line them up, you can see they're about, they're about the same angle. So that didn't change. But the bearings on the old one are longer. And Jeep engineers, um, Dana engineers decided you didn't need that much length for the side load of the, of the truck because the axles are also full floaters and the front axles in the rear, they have uh, their own bearings. So they decreased the size of that to save weight and for emissions, they're trying to get better miles per gallon. So they're gonna design the bearing a little smaller in some ways to make up for that. But you get a much, much stronger bearing. The new Dana is called an M220 and an M210. Go to my previous videos, you'll find out why they're called that. I have a whole video on why they're called the 210 and 220, and that's the millimeters of the ring gear. Those axles, axles are still almost the same size, and they still have the same 8200 nanometers torque, but the ring gear is slightly smaller and lighter. That helps with gas mileage. The other thing here is that Dana says that these are rated at 8% higher torque than previous generations. You're now getting an advanced generation of that called the Advantech. That's why Advantech is so different than any other generation of Dana 44 and Dana 60. You're getting those full advantages and that technology in the third generation um, bearing. So go check out my other videos. I, I cover the ring gear, the actual differentials, uh, the lockers that I'm installing into the JT pickup and uh, my project truck and uh, check out those videos as well. I'll leave a uh, link in the description for you. All right, Tool Talk, I hope you found some of that stuff informative, probably a little mind, a little droning, a little mind numbing, um, but sometimes you have to you kind of have to hit the details if you're really interested in this stuff. And I don't want to leave anything out because there are probably a handful of people that might cue in on those things and find them pretty interesting. If not, at least maybe uh, a little entertaining. Um, I don't expect everybody to, to like this stuff, but I do find that um, that's kind of what makes me tick. And there's gotta be some others out there that really are just getting started, maybe building their tools, maybe they're building their knowledge up. And the biggest thing here is that all of this stuff didn't come from me uh, necessarily ripping into Jeeps. It was part of that, but I had to know what I was doing before I got to that point. And so a lot of this stuff is from research and um, you know, being being detail oriented and, and taking that extra time to um, let you guys know what I found, getting excited about the information, and actually taking time out of my day from my work schedule, from my kids, from my wife, from my regular life to put all this together. Because you have to really love what you do. If you don't find somebody that loves what they do, they probably don't know as much as they should. And so um, that's all I've got for today's video. And I know sometimes these get talky. I don't want to. I don't want to do too much of that. But I want you guys to be well informed. Uh, click like and subscribe, and let me know in the comments what you guys think. And uh, give me some ideas for the next uh, next video you'd like to see. Uh, what about the Jeep makes you tick, and what can I provide you guys that uh, maybe you haven't seen in the umpteen million videos that are already out there for the Jeeps? Uh, it doesn't matter what model or make. I've had them all, but I can uh, provide you some insight and maybe do some teardowns. Thank you guys and uh, take care.